your billy punk who thinks the world's still round. I'm here to tell you it's not. It's flat! <laughs> Interesting guy, man, and uh, you know he believes it. So, Kyrie, the Earth is flat, right? Yeah. 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 So, whatever. That's news. That's news. Here we go. <laughs> you are now tuning into the true frequency. Your protection from, 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 from deception. This is Truth Frequency Radio. Broadcasting straight to you from a large spaceship, currently anchored over Raleigh, North Carolina, eagerly awaiting the 2017 International Flat Earth Conference, coming this fall. Meanwhile, the peanut gallery is in a spaceship, anchored over the Midwest breadbasket. Hello everyone, and welcome to Strange World, where the truth is often stranger than fiction. I'm your host, Mark Sargent, the creator of Flat Earth Clues, which propose that all of us are living inside a Truman Show enclosed structure thousands of miles wide check it out at enclosedworld.com or just google flat earth clues if you can't find it you are being distracted by the slow motion car wreck or train wreck in this case which is harvey weinstein's career if you guys don't know what i'm talking about look up some things like the casting couch of hollywood he's one of hollywood's biggest producers and been doing it for decades produced a whole ton of movies and pretty much every woman he's ever taken advantage of has just come out simultaneously uh, to bring him down you want karma there's a, an example of it slow motion and total uh, for those of you who are listening to this on YouTube and you want to hear the show live as it happens, please go to Truth Frequency Radio for the latest schedule. Currently, the show is on Tuesday nights at 7 Pacific, 10 Eastern. And if it is not October 10th, 2017, then this is a rerun. And uh, you won't be listening to, live, to it live, so you'll have to wait. Uh, but since it is October 10th, at least I'm in the present right now, you can call in, uh, but don't do it right this second because we are going to hopefully have a uh, guest, a special guest tonight. I'm hoping to have landed. Actually, hang on one second. Hang on one second here. Now, let me put this guy on speaker. Hey, can you hear me? I can. Uh, you got to call in the other number. Okay, thank you. All right, that was our special guest, Thomas. He's an air traffic controller from one of the biggest airports in the United States. Let's see if he can make it in here. And he keeps bouncing off for some reason. I do not know why. If he's listening right now, keep trying. I don't know why you're bouncing off. I'm going to give him both numbers, though. The number to call in is, because I'm just looking for the, his city, is 213-233-3998 or... 720-897-61. Why does he keep dropping? I have no idea. I keep showing he keeps showing up on my screen and then he disappears. Anyway, while we're waiting for him to connect, and hopefully he will here pretty soon, uh, let's go into the quote of the day from the peanut gallery, which is people sometimes imagine that just because they have access to so many newspapers, radio, and TV channels, they will get 
an infinity of different opinions. Then they discover that things are just the opposite. The power of these loudspeakers only amplifies the opinion prevalent at a certain time to the point where it covers any other opinion. Who said that? Amin Malouf. M-A-A-L-O-U-F. What other things can we talk about here? How about the Flat Earth Conference? Coming up, get on the waiting list, sign up for live streaming, press passes, you're going to have to lie, cheat, and steal, and do not try to ask for more than two, because they are hard to come by. This thing is completely sold out. And if you want to go... Okay, there's two two ways you can do this. Uh, I, I personally just recommend you just just show up at the thing and hang out because it's going to be hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people. It uh, could be over a thousand. I'm not even sure at this point. There's going to be a lot of people showing up at this thing. Uh, right now, I'm playing kind of ticket exchange with people. So, in fact, let me see if he shows up. And all right, there he is. Stay there, special guest. Okay. Can you hear me? Hey, Mark, how are you doing? I'm doing well. Hey, I'm going to mute I you for can. one. Can you hear me? I can hear you. So I'm going to mute you for one sec, okay? No problem. Okay, hang on. All right, so I'm playing ticket exchange for people that want to go to the conference. So if you are trying to unload a ticket or you are trying to get a ticket, uh, just email me at msergeant23 at comcast.net, and I will try to play matchmaker, and I've already done it a few times. Uh, remember, there's two types of tickets out there. There's general admission and there's VIPs. So when you're emailing me, let me know what type of ticket you're looking for. And remember, we're only like 29 days away. So, again, after you get your ticket, you're going to have to think about travel arrangements. What else? Let's see. Jeffrey Grupp debate challenge still in effect. Email me, same address. Big Money Challenge, also in effect. You can email Kathy Dunson directly at perilandra77 at gmail.com. That is P-E-R-E-L-A-N-D-R-A 77 at gmail.com. I'm pretty sure that DITRH is still doing a billboard is going up near the conference center. So the GoFundMe is called A Stranger's Guide to FE Billboard. And it's going to be running this month and next month, as far as I know. And I've already done the flatter. Oh, yeah, I've got I'm sorry. I've got to thank people. Uh, two two quick things. Uh, one, I want to thank everybody that was involved at the Flat Earth Meetup in Pasadena, California, which I just got back from. That was a blast and a half. Uh, loved hanging out with the documentary team and everybody at the restaurants and everyone was involved. You know who you are. I'm not going to try to name everybody off because we had a whole bunch of people that showed up. And I just had a great time with everybody, and I encourage everybody to do a meetup. I'd love to do that one again if I get a chance. With that in mind, uh, because I know that one of the people down there is looking for a ticket. Her name is Lucy Lemons. She's on YouTube. She has a whole bunch of other social media things. If anybody knows Lucy Lemons, and that's with three S's, L-E-M-O-N-S-S-S, uh, if anyone knows her email address, please shoot me an email at msergeant23 at comcast.net, or you can call in and tell me here, although I probably probably not a good idea to say it over the air. And we will see if we can figure out who how to get her a ticket. And let's see. Quick, again, the phone numbers. We're not going to open up the phone calls uh, to everybody until the next top of the hour because we're going to do our special subject matter expert. The phone numbers to call in are 720-897-6111-213-233-3998. If you're in the UK, 44203-393-2871. And if you just want to call in and listen and not have the chance of me picking you up, the number is 641-793-7117. All right. Let's pick up our guest. I'm not going to tell you where he is, and I'm not going to tell you exactly who he is. Let's just call him Thomas. He is an air traffic controller working one of the largest airports, or I should say busiest airports, in the United States. And he's got some opinions on the whole Flat Earth concept, so we're just going to go back and forth. It's just going to be him and I for at least the first two segments. If he can't make it past two segments, I think he can. Then uh, if he can make it past those two segments, then we'll put up the phone lines. And before we do that, real quick, I just got to check real fast because everybody is sending me stuff here on the other screen. And the peanut gallery says, I think the peanut gallery may be mistaken that the that there's more conference tickets available on the website. I, I don't think the website's been updated, peanut gallery, because from what I've been told, 
those those tickets are long gone. Those two dozen ones that because you're talking about the two dozen tickets, unless they're brand new, I don't think he's updated the website because on the website right now, yeah, I don't trust it. I don't trust it. Okay, well, you know what? If if there are if if he squeezed two more dozen out there, hey, great. Somebody go to the website and see if you can try to get. Yeah, I and he's sending me the link. Yes, I get the extra tickets thing, but sometimes they don't update it. Twenty one hours ago, got. Oh, he he did open up tw- uh, two dozen more. Holy smokes. I don't know where he's getting the room. All right. Anyway, let's get to our subject matter expert for me. All right. And I will forward. I will I will let people know and I will send emails off to other people and I'll still play matchmaker. But uh, the conference did not let me know that they've actually figured out there how they're going to do two more dozen. So fantastic. Anyway, Thomas is his name and he is on the phone line right now. We're going to bring him in. Thomas, are you there? And thank you for being so patient. I am here, and it's my pleasure. Mark, it's good to hear your voice. How are you doing? I'm doing well. So uh, there's going to be a little bit of lag between it. So what's going to happen is I'll try not to step on your toes too much. Sometimes people say, why are you cutting people off? And it's like, no, I'm not cutting anybody off. There's a little bit of a lag. It's like between a quarter and a half of a second. So I will ask you some questions, and there may be some dead air. Or I'm, I'm going to try to compensate for it. So real quickly, or you know, not real quick, take your time. How long have you kind of been looking into this, and how? what's the story? How would you get in? Uh, it's been almost two years. Mm-hmm. Uh, a brother of mine came up from a state or two away for Thanksgiving, and um, he told me about some – lunatic at his church who uh who had some conspiracy theory and he knew i was always kind of a open-minded free thinker uh conspiracy theory kind of guy you know i looked into a couple things before and i was open to things mm-hmm. um so after a, a day or so of his visit and prompting me asking me if, if i thought i was ready for the biggest thing i'd ever heard um eventually he dropped it on me he said hey uh, the earth is flat and uh, of course like every single person i've approached my instant response was Oh, it's not. That's dumb. What are you talking about? What, what, what century is this? Uh, you know, and he and he laughed and he said, you know, everybody says that, uh, but just listen to me for a minute. So I, I did. You know, we had a beer or two and and listened. And um, he had mentioned, you know, I I thought maybe because your background, you might be able to provide some insight that that maybe between the two of us we could uh, we could disprove this guy at my church who you know is by all, all rights a uh, lunatic, which is, you know, what we've all been called and, yeah. and far worse. Um, yeah. And so, yeah, you know, um, so we started looking into it and I, and I listened to his stuff and I said, well, we could see the curvature from airplanes. You know, we've got pictures of it. We can circumnavigate the earth. What about, you know, all the same stuff. Um, and he gave me a couple of, couple of answers and a couple of links. Uh, some of it was, uh, we sat there in some camping chairs in my driveway and, um, and listened to some of the flat earth clues, you know, uh, kudos, by the way. Uh, brilliant stuff. Well, thank you. I don't uh, completely agree with all of your theory, but, you know, the diversity of thought and opinion is what makes us valuable as people. So okay. um, anyway, um, uh, I looked into it a little more and I get, got more and more frustrated that my mind was thinking, you know what? Uh, I no longer know what the shape of this place is that we live. Um, I, I will tell you now, currently, I don't really feel like I'm 100% wide open flat earther because there's a couple of things here and there that give me a little pause that make me think, ah, I don't know how to explain that. But at the same time, there are far too many things uh, about the ball earth that give me as much or more grief. So at this point, I would say um, I feel much more likely that that it's just a, a big scam and we're living on a giant flat plane and, um, and the whole thing's a a NASA cover up, you know, um, Nice. but I, I could be convinced either way at this point, if I was given some de- definitive, absolute hands down stuff, but I really don't trust anybody who's putting out this quote unquote science these days anyway. So, um, yeah. I just, I know we can't see any curvature. I know we've not been to space. I know it's not what they're telling us it is. And, uh, and it's been a really interesting thing at least to look into and, um, and to chat about with friends, it's it's really a fascinating topic. I'm, I'm enjoying the journey so far. Yeah, yeah, it is. It is an amazing topic, and and thank you for sharing that. It it gives people people have said uh, or have asked me recently. Uh, they said, okay, why is this thing resonating so much? 
why is why is it catching on? I go two reasons. One and they're really short reasons. The first one is because it's the the basic concept is easy to understand. It's like, look, it's not a globe anymore. It's it's some sort of flat surface. You know, it's, it's either surrounded by a dome or it isn't, and it's got some really cool features to it. But the other thing is is that it's a positive message. It's it's a message of hope. Where it, where it's it's not dark and sinister. I mean, yeah, it's got some dark and you know people are hiding secrets, obviously, but it's got a sure, real, sure. it's got that silver lining to it. I mean, look, there's people, a lot of people writing songs about this. You don't see that in any other conspiracy, and the people that I have yeah, talked yeah. to, I, email after email, I get for you know people will say. You know, oh, it's just, you know, yeah, I felt claustrophobic at first, but now, you know, some people cry, some people have these, you know, fantastic epiphanies, and they all, you know, have this wonderful, warm feeling towards like, oh, yeah, I'm now part of a community, and we're not alone. That's the big thing. You know, you're, you know, we're not talking about aliens, like, we're not alone, there's spaceships flying around necessarily. It's like, look, I, you're, yeah, sure, you're, sure. we're not alone. And, it's a fantastic thing. I go, those are two very power. you know, those are, ask anybody that creates, you know, big, big ideas. It's like, it's easy to understand and it's got a positive aspect to it. That's a winning combination. And that's why it's not going to yeah, stop. Absolutely. So, um, so after you, you, you know, you got that, that fantastic journey. Uh, and again, you know, you and I have not spoken. You've been into this for two years. What's, um, what finally prompted you to, uh, to track me down? Well, um, the biggest thing for me that, that got me looking into, or, or, or maybe the strongest point of arguments from the flight risk community for me, uh, mm -hmm. being an air traffic controller in the aviation community, um, the flight routes, the flight routes just messed me up, man. They, they, they wrecked my world and it made perfect sense to me that there's, there's out of the hundreds or thousands of airplanes that I speak to on a daily basis, um, for the last 19 years, there's not an airplane out there that's going to refuse a shortcut. They all would like to have their route shortened you know, because the longer go, in the air, the more money they're spending. And the whole thing is about money. Go ahead. Let, let, yeah, let's go into let's go into some detail about that. So you've been a, a an air traffic controller for 19 years, handling all you know yep. all the major airlines, you know big, uh, busy busy terminals. And, uh, yep. and when, and so break, break it down. Cause I had somebody mentioned to me and this, by the way, this is not the same air traffic controller that I talked to last year from, uh, from the Midwest. This is, you know, but, but those people I'm talking to anybody in the airline industry, they've all told me the same thing, which is when it comes to the airlines, it's all about fuel, plain and simple. It is all about sa saving as many pounds of fuel as possible. Cause that is literally you're burning money. And so kind of kind of go into that, how desperate planes are to do that and why that doesn't make sense on a on a on a globe because of the routes they're taking. There are two very minor exceptions to that. It's all about fuel idea. OK, um, the box haulers, okay. some of the companies that are delivering product, mm -hmm. they are so committed to a schedule and making sure their product is on time ah. and at a certain place at a certain time. Ah. Yep. On a very rare occasion, you will offer them somewhere farther down the line on their route, and and they'll refuse that. They'll say, no, we got to stay on our route for scheduling because they have to be at a certain place at a certain time just in case another airplane shuts down for the night or something. They have to pick up somebody else's load and carry that. Um, that's exception number one. That's It's still rare. Most of them will still uh, take the shortcut, but very rarely you might hear that from a, a box hauler, um, a delivery company. Um, the other exception on a very rare occasion is the military when they're on a training route and they need to go to a, on a specific route sometimes you will offer them somewhere uh, a shortcut of some sort to, to get closer to their destination and they'll say yeah we'd like to stay on the route for training but thank you um anybody corporation wise airline wise general aviation wise anyone that has ever um that, that i've ever talked to if i'm able to offer them somewhere a shorter route I offer it. They are glad to take it. They are thankful to take it. And many of them um, will request any chance you got something further down the line for me. And I'll give them whatever the next fix is on their route. And even if it's a one degree turn, um, which is saving them literally maybe 25, 35, 60 seconds worth of flying time, uh, they're very grateful. Oh, thanks. Hey, appreciate that. And thanks for the help, guys. Thanks a lot. Um, the 
the savings of money is best illustrated by saving gas or, or uh, anal- analogized. I don't know what I'm saying there. But um, yeah. to save money, they have to save fuel. That's the best way they can save uh, right. They can save money, and money is is the bottom line for these airlines. You know, um, we'd like to think that they're doing it out of the kindness of their heart, but um, you know, if they're not paid well, they're not going to continue doing what they're doing, and, and, and that will affect the whole global economy. Um, point is, they want to get farther down the line. Ad nauseum, every single one of them will ask you all the time, all the time, uh, "Can I get a shortcut, may I please?" Anywhere down the line, and every time you give it to them, they're very grateful. So the fact that these airlines um, would fly from the bottom of South Africa all the way up to Dubai, just to go down to the bottom of Australia. And they would call that what commerce. Yeah. Yeah. They're doing it. They're, they're saying that's the most efficient route you're calling BS. You're saying there is no way never in a million years. There's, there's no way what all they would do if they thought that there was a shorter route, instead of increasing the, the, the distance by, uh, what is it, a 60% increase or 70% Yo, at increase least. of mileage? At least. Rather than yeah. do that, the airline would just, they would just have less options. They would say, okay, instead of offering this flight three times a week, like we had thought we would do, we'll just offer it once a week until it fills up. They're going right. to run an airplane full of people and as many butts in the seats as they can to help share the cost of fuel. You know, that's what they're going to do. Um, um, so to add 50, 60, 70% distance on one flight just to say, well, it's just for commerce. We're just going to stop off in Dubai because there's more people that want to go from here to there to there to here. It just doesn't hold water to me. It doesn't make right, sense. Right, right. And like when you're going from uh, somewhere in South America, say Buenos Aires, and you're going across to the other side, somewhere in Australia, and you're going through, you know, when I saw the connections, when I first saw the connections like um, Dallas, yeah. San Francisco, LA, I'm going, well, you know, on a globe, you're looking at this and you're going, why in God's name? And, and you know, the average yeah. person on the street, they're going to all say the same things. Well, they're just picking up passengers. And I'm going, no, no, you don't. The average right. person doesn't get it. It's like, no, it's not about, I don't care unless they're all first class passengers. And even then, it, it's not worth it. It's just, I mean, not. it's not just the fuel. I mean, it's also wear and tear on the plane. You know, you're paying the, the pilots an extra God knows how many hours it takes. Some of those, I mean, you, you saw some sure. of the connections I listed. Some of those flights, when you were going yep. from Southern Hemisphere to Southern Hemisphere, you were taking upwards of over two days, you know, over 48 hours to get there to where, uh, let me yes. break into this for a sec. There was a, uh, you probably heard me say this, and we do, we have about five minutes to the first break, so just wanted to let you know. The, um, okay. There was a, uh, 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 oh boy. I forgot the uh, person that books your flights reservation. Um, air, they, they used to have them back in the sure. day. Well, people that made your reservations, a person, uh, travel agent, geez, well, the fact that I forgot that name, uh, down the Southern hemisphere, she specialized in Southern hemisphere. And she goes, people down the Southern hemisphere would complain bitterly. She, it's like, why can't we get a direct flight from this capital city to this capital city any day of the week? Why, you know, sure. no matter how much money it's like, look, we're willing to pay first class. You cannot get some of these flights. And she goes, I'd have to deal with this all the time. And she goes, it never made sense until I looked at that. So the question I put to you was, how long did it, now you must have you must have picked up on it faster than most when when you finally saw the routes, how they were laid out on a globe and then compared on a flat map? Did it did it was it an aha moment for you or you're going, holy smokes, you know, you 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 understood the concept was- better. It was a it was a frustrating moment because at the point that I'd watched those, I was still thinking, uh, flatter boats are out of line. Um, did I lose you? Or we're still here? No, no, you're still there. Okay, good. Um, yeah, I was thinking, yeah, these flatter boats are uh, they're out of their minds. We're gonna disprove this. We'll, we'll figure it out. We'll get it straightened out. Let me let me show them, you know, how smart we are and all yeah. that. So uh, it was a frustrating moment for me when I first saw it because it just obliterated my thoughts and dreams of you know, this ball earth that we were supposed to live on. Um, it, it just destroyed it to me. Um, the, was it did, when you the saw the straight lines? I watched. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. It's, when you put it on the flat earth, you put it on the azimuthal equidistant map and, and, and you put it on the flat map and, and they're, they're a three degree turn. It was like, it was, it was a eureka moment as much as frustrating as it was to me. Um, at the same time as, um, eye opening, it was, it was uh that was and, the, and 
the thing that sealed the deal. When you mentioned, then, you know, we've all seen the, um, go ahead. Sorry, go ahead. No, no, go ahead. Go ahead. We're stepping on each other a little bit. It's all right. Okay. Um, another video that I've seen the same day that I watched the airline routes was of the, uh, the lady who was flying from the Philippines to Los Angeles and she went into labor halfway through the flight and then diverted to Alaska. It diverted to Anchorage. Uh, yeah. Yes, absolutely. No reason, zero reason, no reason whatsoever to divert to Alaska. If you're on a direct flight from the Philippines to Los Angeles, you're not anywhere close. You're, it would take you, I mean, you would be within, I don't know what the percentage is of miles, but it's, it's, it's mox mix. It's, it's just, there's no point to go to Anchorage when you could just carry on to, to Los Angeles. It, it's or, just close. Or Hawaii. And to put it on the flat map. It was, yeah, absolutely. Hawaii. Yeah, why not? Why not? Yeah. Um, so that was a, another one of those moments that just blew my mind and made me think, you know what, my brother and his buddy from central Florida, maybe they're out of something. <laughs> That's yeah, awesome. That was, a, um, that was the biggest thing for me. And I, and I've seen some things here and there. Um, I mentioned to you earlier, the whole reason I wanted to call, which is you asked me that earlier and I've kind of been rabbit trailing. I'm a little scattered. No, no it's all right. Um, but just so you know, you've got about you why six, I finally six... decided to get in touch with you. Oh yeah. 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 Okay, so uh, and then, so, um, but yeah, so the, it did. It took right. you a while. It did. Um, I kind of thought in my head, eh, this YouTube guy, I've listened to hundred hours of his stuff, and um, you know, he's got other radio programs and stuff. He very likely he's not actually answering messages anymore on his cell phone. He's probably blown up with that and tired of talking to all these other uh, weirdo conspiracy theory guys. Maybe maybe he's tired of it. But you know what? What the heck? Let's give him a call. Worst case scenario, we leave a voicemail that just disappears into nowhere. Um, but there's there was an issue for me with the flat earth argument that a lot of us use. And I imagine we're right up on the break. We can get into yeah, that yeah, afterwards. We, we're but we up, do we're use an up. argument in many guys. Well, we'll tell okay. you what. Here's, here's um, what we'll do. We'll, we'll use we'll, an argument, and I got problems with it. So we'll get into that next break. Okay, we'll get into that in the next break. Uh, we are speaking with Thomas, yeah. air traffic controller for the United States at one of the country's busiest airports. And we're not going to take calls this next segment, but we probably will at the top of the hour if he's willing to stick around. We'll see how it goes, but I'm gathering from the uh, information we're cranking out. I think we'll be able to do it. So stay tuned. We'll be back in three minutes. Welcome back to Strange World, part two of four, and we are speaking with subject matter expert, air traffic controller for the United States, busy airport, not going to tell you which one, and his name we're going with tonight is Thomas, and let's pick him back up real quick. Thomas, are you still there? I am indeed. Cool. Cool. So where we left off was you, uh, you've been in this about two years doing the air traffic control thing for about 19 years. And, and before we get into the, the thing that, uh, you were, you're going to talk about where there was, you still have some issues with the flat earth. You're not 100%, but you absolutely know that it's not a globe. Uh, you mentioned, cause no one else has talked about this when you're, when you were comparing the global air traffic routes to the AE map. And you were saying, oh, yeah, on some of these, it was like a three or four degree turn. What is, which which really only the, the terms that you guys use, what is sort of like the maximum, to, you know, of course, lower degrees are better if you can pull it off. But when it gets to a certain degree, is it, you know, is not worth it anymore? Well, um, due to nav limitations, if you're not using GPS, things like that, um, if we're using the old VOR system, the antiquated 
1900s stuff. Yeah. Um, sometimes you have to have uh, big terms just because the nav aids are only in certain spots and you can't oh. really necessarily go point to point. But of none of these big airlines that are going overseas are, are using those whatsoever anymore. Um, they're they're flying point to point. They've all got the fanciest equipment out there. So um, they're using GPS. And if you believe that GPS is, <laughs> that doesn't necessarily stand for satellite in my opinion. Um, yeah. Anyway, um, so the amount of turn, what's acceptable, eh, that's, I mean, that's up to the airline and it's mostly up to acceptable flight routes due to busy areas. But when you're flying out over the ocean, there aren't very many airplanes out there. Yeah. So um, a couple degrees here and there would, would be acceptable, five, 10 degrees here and there. Sure. But um, there's, there's no way they're going to program um, 70 miles, 80 miles, 150 or, or 1,500 miles. That's 20 or 30 degrees off course unless they had a significant reason to do it. Got it. Uh, much less 80 or 90 degrees off course and then um, – or 120 and have it <laughs> almost reverse course to go back to the southern hemisphere after coming all the way out of the su- uh, southern portion of the hemisphere. So, yeah, um, yeah, it, yeah, it seems absolutely ludicrous to me. I, I've seen some links recently um, that were pretty good arguments um, uh-huh. of – that some some of my buddies have sent me that have said, hey, wait a second, they do fly these routes. They do. They fly from here to there, and they fly in these amount of hours, such stuff like that. And and I feel like I've heard some of the stuff you've talked about before, and, and others in the in the community, um, that if you get on flight aware, you watch these guys depart. You can watch them depart live from you know somewhere in Brazil or or Venezuela or whatever. You you can watch them depart live, and as soon as they get thirty miles off the coast, poof, they just disappear. Yeah, they just go away. Yeah. We don't know where they really are. We, we don't know what flight they're really taking. Um, the thing that would be kind of a hang up for me there is if these flights are X amount of miles and they're doing them in the, in the normal allotted amount of time, mm-hmm. that would be kind of a hang up because I would expect a significantly longer amount of time uh, rather than the direct that they're claiming they're doing. Yeah. Um, yeah. So yeah. Again, and whether you... or not they're really doing that, I don't know. That would be tough for me, but. Yeah. Yeah. There's definitely some scaling issues. No, no question. We, we've talked about that literally since the beginning, yeah. which is there's something going yeah. on when planes go from some of these distances, they shouldn't be able to make it. And some people say, well, maybe the aircrafts are flying faster than normal. Maybe the routes, maybe the, but most people have kind of resigned themselves. Okay. There's something wrong about the map, not severely wrong, but enough to where you have to, you're going to, you know, things have to be squished, but they can't show us the real map because the real map wouldn't sure. make any sense on any known projection. I mean, the AE still to, right. to this day for me is the closest one we've got because you know I just don't know if we're going to make it. I mean, the, the, there was only a couple guys out there that have even tried to redo the map, the most famous one being Tiger Dan from, from England. Where he was doing like a live right. update every day. He was like adjusting because he was adjusting the mileage between the cities and bending the continents to the cities. And then something happened right. and either he went crazy or he, well, whatever, he's never showed his face ever since, since never been an audio or video and sure. he disappeared. Anyway, enough of that. So I, he was, I've even great. heard that uh, Loran with their, um, with their seagoing navigational systems, all their, all their GPS finders for their boats and stuff, that they are constantly releasing navigational anomaly updates to, to download for folks that operate in the southern hemisphere frequently. Um, northern hemisphere, they do that very rarely. Southern hemisphere, they do it all the time uh, due to oh yeah anomalies did, in the southern the hemisphere. Malaysian, so, yeah, there's, it's well documented about. Did the, did the Malaysian flights kind of make sense to you? You know, I didn't cover it in the clues, and and there's a few people that have talked about it. How they could lose some flagship triple sevens out in the Indian Ocean if indeed they were not being tracked if it was just estimated or approximated mode that always threw me it's like okay i mean triple sevens it's the best we got out there and you're telling me you have no idea where they went down come on did that sort of raise any yeah, flags for you uh, there's, there's there's a lot of hocus pocus going on there i know the the uh, the motors themselves that are on those airplanes actually have a a gps registry where they will send a signal a ping of their actual gps location once every, and maybe it's every minute or every couple of minutes. I'm not sure how frequently it is. Um, I don't get that that deep into the uh, into the navigational systems of, of most airframes, but um, I know they have at least some idea whether or not they can even trust their own quote GPS systems or not. I'm not sure, but um, they should have had some idea where they 
started to descend or where they, where, you know, where the, where the problems first started to happen. That, that was a, like I said, a lot of smoke and mirrors going on there. I'm not sure how that all went down. I right. uh, didn't look into it super deep and I haven't looked into it at all since I've started looking at some flatter stuff. So, yeah, I mean, I, I wasn't even, well. I, I wasn't even, you, I'm sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. I was just going to say during that last break, I went and, uh, went and grabbed a delicious double IPA from the refrigerator and I'm going <laughs> to, yeah, I'm going to open that now. Nice. Yeah, I I remember when the uh, the the Malaysian thing. So I'm I'm I you know I'm a tech nerd. I love technology, and so when I heard about the Malaysian stuff, I, I I'm I, you know being the conspiracy guy, you're thinking okay, something else is going on. But at the same time, it's like look, oh, yeah. when you're not when you're not finding any wreckage, it it bugged the hell out of me. Was, what why 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 would there be why could you not find yeah, this? That's a I mean, big airplane, and there's a lot of items that are designed on that airplane to float on purpose. Right. Um. And when you hit water doing any rate of speed, you know, 60, 80, 100 knots or more, it's almost like hitting concrete. It's really hard. Oh, yeah. Um, that airplane would have come apart. Um, and, and there should have been a significant amount of debris. I mean, even the seat cushions. Right. They're made to be flotation devices in the event of a water landing or something. You know, we've all heard this when we get on the airplanes. I, I would have expected to see a significantly larger amount of debris. It would have been a bigger field. Yep. And, Me too. They found almost nothing. Yeah. So let's let's get into your the second part that we initially talked about when you first called me, which was yeah. Yeah, you're ninety yeah. you're, you're way up there. You're not a total flat earther, but you know full da- You're not alone in that regards. There's lots of people out there that say, "Look, I don't sure. know what where well, I am." The programming I, is strong, man. It's yeah. really strong. It's hard to get past it. You know. I know. I I know it is. Hey, look, yeah. it took me it took me months. To get to get past it, and and I had to look at a lot of things. I mean, honestly, I had even after I made the clues, I wasn't one hundred percent convinced because I kept thinking it wasn't that I had done. Uh, I thought I had done the best job I could do, but I was still worried that someone, you know, a peer review type situation, someone was going to come in from the outside and go, no, 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 no. Here's where you messed it up, and. I still right. had to sit and wait another couple months before I said, okay, I think I got it. I think I, I think I've got this. So well, what what questions is, are still Mark, out there for you? We don't know what we don't know. Yeah. Big thing is we don't know what we don't know. Right. And since we've been being fed from the Lord gods of science for the past, you know, 50, 60, 80 years, this line of horseshit, um, <laughs> what of it can we accept and, and, and should we discard at this point? Right. So it's very difficult to just discard every bit of it. Um, it's hard to wash that all 100% clean. And then, you know, there's plenty of folks out there significantly smarter and far more educated than I am that could maybe explain away half of these things that on surface, at the surface value, it looks like, oh, yeah, see there, you can't even see any curve. That means that everything's flat. Well, maybe there's an exp- explanation. I don't know. So part of me is just reserved to say that maybe there is a legitimate scientific explanation. I don't know why we haven't heard uh, enough of them, but um, – Something might come out someday, and I'm not so committed to the flat plane that I couldn't be convinced otherwise. But damn it, I sure think the ball thing is a big giant hoax, and yeah. it just lines up with um, with the whole cross versus crown and the Big Bang theory and evolution and all that stuff. The whole uh, yeah. trying to discredit the, the creator or going back and forth between you know power struggles. But it's, oh yeah, the, the yeah, cross yeah, yeah. Thing. It just it, it kind of makes sense to me, you know. The institution um, of science is just too old for them to give up that easily. They're, they're just not going to do it. It's like we're talking right. hundreds Absolutely. of years here. And they've got so much invested in it. Oh, God, yes. You know, the budget at NASA, is it, is it still $19 billion a day? Is that, is that still uh, no, no, it's nine, 19, 19 billion a year. Nine. So that's about three, a, a year. Okay, three, three, three million a day. That's a lot still. Okay, yeah. So three million, three million a day, it's, what, what would be easier? Would it be easier to find some absolute brilliant genius level Stanley Kubrick and win the Cold War without actually ever lighting a single rocket off? Right. Which would be brilliant, by the way. Absolutely genius level Oscar winning brilliant, most <laughs> amazing piece of art in the world to win a war by faking some movies. But um, I mean, I feel like most of us are pretty solid on the whole NASA fake crap thing. Yeah. Um, so, so what would be easier? And then they have that budget of three million dollars a day, you know, nineteen billion dollars a year, whatever. It's yeah. so easy to perpetuate. And you've started with. Anytime I talk to some of the some of my baby boomer friends, and I've got 
many, and the, the cog- cognitive dissonance is so strong. They are instantly offended when you mention that we didn't go to the moon. Well, I heard it on the radio. I saw it in black and white two days later. Uh, one, of the, one of the things I always try and illustrate is, okay, wait a second, hold on a second, wait, wait, wait. We were live streaming video from the moon in the 60s, right? That's what right. you're telling me? But I, as an aircraft controller, I can't talk to a to an airplane that's on the ground 45, 50 miles away while he's on the ground 50 miles away from my facility with the frequencies we have right now. That's, a, that's what you're telling me? But in the <laughs> 60s, we could live stream video from the moon. <laughs> it's, it's, it's yeah like, yeah that you're right that is that is uh, utterly perfect. utterly ridiculous the uh yeah and, and you gotta go well, heck, i remember so much invested in it remember know? remember nixon talked to them on the moon right right the president was sitting there chilling having a chat i'm sorry i was wrong about those numbers sorry guys because i just asked peanut gallery i go what's 19 billion divided by 365 because i'm not going to punch up my count cal- my calculator and it's $52 million a day. <laughs> so it's a lot. Okay. It's, right. a, it, it's still a huge, huge amount of money. Sorry, $50 million yeah. a day. So they, they start off, they start with this big giant lie. And, they, you know, the Copernican model way back when with all the drama that went on with Copernicus and all that stuff back and forth. And the church finally decided, you know what, we like this thing. We're going to stick with that. And then the government had to kind of get on board with it. Like I said, the, the, the power struggle, the cross and pound, crown power struggle that's been going on for thousands of years. Um, and they all got on board, got unified. Um, with the, in the in the fifties, we've all heard about Admiral Byrd, you know, and we've heard about all the conspiracies of uh, Hitler going to the South Pole and all the things we've found there. And some of the, I, I don't, I don't know, I think some of the pilots thought they were running into force fields. Maybe it was a, no oh, right. Um, so all that they got to cover it up. NASA's form, the the Antarctic Treaty is formed, all that stuff. Van Allen, uh, late fifties, was when he found found the radiation belts, right? I mean. Maybe there is no damn radiation belt whatsoever. Maybe it's just a firmament that people are smacking into, you know, Operation Dominic and Fishbowl and all that stuff where we try to blow it up. It just, it, it's all far too coincidental for me to say, oh, yeah, I believe all that stuff. I'm just going to, you know, eat your fire hose of bullshit, just hook one in the sinker, no problem. Just spit it at me. I'm fine with it. Just too skeptical. I can't, I can't buy it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For, for me, yeah, I, I don't believe in coincidences. I, and not that many. There was just too many in a row where I said, "Look, oh, you know, if you run into your, you run into the neighbor, your neighbor at the grocery store, uh, that's a coincidence." And it's like, "Oh, hey, Fred, hey," but the rest of, the, yeah. I mean, this stuff, anything else, you know, it, it, it's planned. I'm sorry, there's just too many things. I mean, I, th- I mean, yes, the, the three aspects of the, the whole flat Earth thing. There's the connect the dots stuff, which is me, the, um, the sign scientific method which is you know other people that do experiments and then the religious side and it, there was when i was connecting too many things to where i was like going oh, holy smokes it's a smiley face right there you know it's a it's a ladybug yeah, yeah i'm absolutely. connecting all the stuff i'm going it's yep. it, there's nothing else this thing could be there's too many things to even this day where it, i'm sorry not to go off on a rant the the antarctic treaty which i, I keep it. telling people was like look it's locked down. You can't. My company, tell me a, a place where a corporation, no matter how much money they have, can't go down there. It does not make any sense. Yeah. Corporations abuse power every single day. Happens every day. And and Antarctica is apparently the exception to that very, very big rule. So anyway, uh, so go, go, so wait. many different lines of so many different nations. Go ahead. No, well, before we get to the second break, because we got uh, let's call it 10 minutes. Uh, I, I kind of want to okay. want you to get into the your your little hangups or whatever I'm not going to call them little yeah. the hangups that you we've gone that back you and forth on this and I keep rabbit trailing. That's okay. That's all right. That's fine. A lot that's, of the flat earth community, yeah, they keep uh, they keep saying um, one of the proofs that the Earth is flat is that if an airline were in level flight at thirty five thousand feet, yeah, every fifty miles or so they would have to intentionally dip the nose down in order to stay level. Right. Um, so, so for me, I want, I want the argument to be strong, right? Mm-hmm. I, I'm kind of rooting for this flat earth thing now. And, and I would like to have all of the arguments that are just, um, you know, cockamamie or not true or whatever, or just 
crazy. And call me crazy because who in the world talks about the flat earth and tries to say that any portion of it is sane, right, in this world. But, um, you know, if there's something that we have that's a proof that science, I would like it to be solid and sound and irrefutable. Um, this one in particular, my opinion is that it is not correct. Um, the way these instruments work on these airplanes, they have an altimeter, um, and it's just analog machine. It's just a basic pressure reading reader. It just reads the barometric pressure. And once an aircraft gets to a certain altitude, they just plug in 29 inches, 29.92 inches of, of uh, barometric pressure. They plug it in there, and that tells them how far away from the surface of the plane or ball that it is. Um, and that it would be indifferent because the machine doesn't know the difference, just like a gyroscope doesn't know the difference. It doesn't know. It has no idea. There would be no programming required. Uh, as an aircraft... Um, when an aircraft departs, you know, the nose of the aircraft is significantly higher as they're first lifting off because they're in a climb, a nice steep climb. But yeah. even when an aircraft levels off, maybe some of the listeners will have a flight tomorrow and be able to and check this out. And I feel like you had a flight recently. I'm not sure if you if you would. Uh, I did, enough, but, but I, I didn't um, bring even any. Even in level flight. Yeah. Sure, you wouldn't have to have instruments or anything. You can just kind of look at it and see the person coming down the aisle with your drink cart just kind of coming down the aisle at an angle. But the nose of the aircraft it's still tilted up a little bit, even in level flight. It's just, it's tilted up a little bit, similar to the way a helicopter flies. It's, it's upward thrust followed by a little bit of a lean forward that drags it, uh, you know, forward, um, in flight. So a fixed wing aircraft operates kind of similarly, except it doesn't have as much upward thrust. It has more forward thrust and it gets the lift from the fixed wing and the airfoil and all that. Um, so, even when an aircraft is climbing, 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 they're nice and steep. Then they level off. You get that little whoopee in your belly. You know, you feel it's kind of float for half a second. And then it settles down in and it's level at 35,000 feet. It's still kind of tipped up a little bit. And okay. part of the reason for that is you and I, um, we had mentioned before, we've talked before, all of us in this kind of community have heard, have, we realized that the term gravity is a bullshit term. Yeah. Um, and I would rather somebody say the magic hocus pocus that pulls us down. I, I kind of personally, I'm leaning towards the, um, the electromagnetic kind of kind of universe thing, but, um, yeah. whatever it is that pulls us down and let's just call it gravity for ease of conversation. So this aircraft is fighting the pull of gravity the entire time mm -hmm. while creating its own lift the entire time. And it would be almost in a constant state of fall if it weren't for, the ailerons and the rudders and the speed of the aircraft all being constantly adjusted by the computer to say, are we at 35,000 feet? Yes. Are we at 35,000 feet? No, we're at 35,100. Okay. Back it down a little bit. All right. Now we're at 35,000 feet. Okay. Now we're at 35,040 feet and we're, and they're constantly adjusting and it's so instantaneous and constant. The instrument that says, how high are we? It doesn't care if it's round or if it's flat. Right. So the adjustments are continuous every second and maybe even dozens of times a second with these, with these brilliant machines these days mm -hmm. with the autopilot and stuff. And even a pilot, if you didn't have autopilot, you're just flying around in a little junky little Cessna Cardinal, a little 150 um, at 4,000 feet or 4,500, whatever. Um, he's looking at an instrument. He says, oh, I'm a little low up. I'm a little high up. I'm a little low, a little high. You know, and they're going up and down six feet, three feet, two feet, seven feet, and up and down just bouncing yeah. along in, in the wind. Yeah. So the argument of, well, an airline would just fly off into the atmosphere and they'd just be out in outer space, that it kind of doesn't hold water to me. Just uh, because of my experience with the career field, nah, that's not really how the airplanes work. So while I'm rooting for the flat earth, I like all the different pieces that people are finding and there's brilliant stuff being put out every day and sure. there's arguments to and from and I like the debate and maybe someday I'll be convinced that we're on a ball, doubt it, but maybe someday I'll be convinced. But, um, I would like our argument on the flat earth side to be as strong as possible. And I feel like that's not really a valid argument. That's all. No, I gotcha. I gotcha. But, but at the same time, what you're saying yeah. is it really doesn't help the globe either. The globe can't claim it as, as well. No, not yeah. at all. No, it makes no difference for either person. It's absolutely neutral. The machine doesn't work any different, no matter what the shape of what, of our world is. It won't, won't work any differently. Yeah. yeah. I hear you. Yeah. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah. And and yeah, if well, anyone's out there, I'd the top 200. So I surely wouldn't make it number 168 on my list. I'm not taking <laughs> that to the court saying, oh, this is flat because of this. Nope. Got I it. wouldn't bring that whatsoever. I I love because there's yeah. there's been quite a few people that have used uh, both manual levels and digital levels out there. I'd love to, to have them kind of look okay. into this a little bit because 
from yeah. what I can tell, everyone keeps saying, you know, that it's flying perfectly level. However, if the plane has sort of a little little bit of a nose up, is that detectable from a level? Or is the cabin, or when they design the plane, is the cabin already compensated for that? You know what I mean? Where, you know, the in, the interior yeah, cabin is already designed to be perfectly level because we've had people that have flown long, long distances and they say, look, it stays perfectly bubble level or digital level and it doesn't move. But I but I totally get your thing right. where it's like, I look, a plane is, is still just a slow moving bullet. So it's going to be kind Regardless of a... Regardless of how high the nose is tipped, even if it's only tipped a couple of inches or even zero, if it's not tipped whatsoever, the fact remains the airfoil is still generating lift. Yeah. And with the just normal atmospheric anomalies and headwinds and crosswinds and, and speeds and all these different tiny micro calculate micro calculations that have to be done. Yeah. The magical hocus pocus called gravity that pulls us down to the surface. It's constantly fighting that. Got so it. the adjustment would be to constantly provide lift and then up and down six feet, 12 feet, two feet, seven feet, back and forth to try and find that level at 40,000 or 35,000 or whatever it is. Sure. Um, so sure. There, the, the adjustments would still be continuous and constant and unnoticeable. Um, and it wouldn't matter flat earth or ball. Hmm. So right. I would like well, our argument to be strong. I'm no, sure no, no. I, I hear I, And I'm glad that, you know, you're, you're trying to, uh, you know, help boost the argument and say, look, it, it's not your, it's not the best yeah. case. And honestly, for me, uh, you know, I didn't talk about it in the clues. I mean, I like it. I still think it's a because let's put it this way: whether or not the argument can be proved, it, it's a great visual for people. It's an easy visual for people, you know, because sure. like all you do is take a literally take a toy plane and a globe, or any graphic you want, and you've you've seen them as much as I have. There's a ton of them out there where people yeah. are saying, "Oh yeah, you've got to adjust, you've got to adjust." I'm just going, well. And you're saying, eh, maybe not. But at the same time, you're also saying, look, it, it may not matter that the adjustment's not going to it's it's not going to help the, the globe argument either. So both sides might as well just work, work on some something else. Well, something to consider yeah. is that just say that the, the diameter of the sphere, if we're going to entertain that, was say the size of a, a quarter and the diameter of an aircraft flying above the sphere at 40,000 feet was the diameter of a half dollar. Just, to, mm-hmm. you know, imagine a, a ring within a ring. Um, with the aircraft being in a constant state of fall, as it would pass right to left around that ring, it would constantly kind of be falling closer and closer to that ring anyways. Right. So it's the only thing that the instrument would really care about is how far am I falling towards that ring? And we are constantly falling towards this magical gravity thing. Sure. Um, everybody is constantly dragged towards it, and the aircraft is as well. So um, if you don't have enough thrust and you don't have enough flaps or rudder or ailerons or whatever, if you don't have enough lift from the airfoil, you're going to fall. And if you get that at just the right sweet spot, you could kind of fall around the ball anyways. Right. Right. You know what I mean? Yep, I do. You could get your instruments to just read it to where you're in that in that descent rate of 1,700 feet every 50 miles or so, which would just be very minor and imperceptible. Um, yeah. What all the instrument cares about is I'm at 29.92 inches of, uh, of uh, barometric pressure, and am I showing 40,000 feet? Yes, I am. Okay, things are good. Am right. I showing 40,000 feet? Yes, I am. Okay, good. And if I'm showing 40,100, okay, we should bring it down a little bit. Gotcha. gotcha. So that's all the machine cares about. All right. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Um, we're going to be going to our second break here in a bit. Uh, do you want to hang around and just be listening on some calls oh, and sure. see if maybe maybe have guys out there? So what we're going to do when we come back from the break, we're going to keep speaking with our subject matter expert, Thomas, an air traffic controller for one of the busiest airports in the United States. I'm not going to tell you which one, but I can vouch for it, and I can vouch for him. So the phone number to call in will be 720-897-6111. That is 720-897-6111 or 213-233-3998. Either one will work. And you you can, of course, when you guys call in, you can talk about anything you want. But if you do have specific questions for an air traffic controller or you just want his take on anything you can ask him or you can ask me about whatever you want to ask me about the forest fires or vegas or oh uh, harvey weinstein you can do that too so anyway three minutes we'll be back guys don't go anywhere
wherever you are. Make it, make it, T T T Truth Frequency Radio. Welcome back to Strange World, part three of four. It is subject matter expert night. We have Thomas, air traffic controller of 19 years for one of the busiest airports in the United States. I'm not going to tell you which one. But before we get to him, and we are going to open up the phone lines as well, a quick announcement. Two dozen tickets for the conference in Raleigh, North Carolina, FEI172017.com is uh they're available right now so go and check them out if you cannot find them if you cannot find them at the website it should be pretty easy to find i mean come on we're all computer people now if you can't find them email me msergeant23 at comcast.net i will send you the link but as of right now yes the peanut gallery has said that it's it's been if the um uh, the peanut gallery said that we were going to have extra tickets and, and I didn't believe him. And so I actually asked the conference guy during the break and he said, yes, there are going to be two dozen tickets right now. So two dozen, two dozen tickets. You guys need a ticket the, you got, uh, 20 something days and there's 22, 23 tickets left. So fantastic. Great. Again, if you just go to FEI 2017.com. You'll find them. Or is it FEI 17.com? Holy crap. I can't remember anymore. Anyway, so we've got the subject matter ex- sex. Are you are are you there with us, Thomas? Are you, are, are you there with us, Thomas? All right, I'm kind of here. There we go. I'm back. Can you okay. hear me good? Yeah, I can. Okay. Uh, okay. Make sure you turn down uh, the okay. show in the background though, because I'm getting an echo. Show in the background though, because I'm getting an echo. Okay, I'll turn that off. Okay. And let's pick up a call or two and see what happens. I uh, got a couple calls coming in from California, which is interesting considering it's burning to the ground as we speak. Let's pick up. We'll tell you what we'll do. Alhambra, California first, and then, uh, and <laughs> and then after that we'll do. Uh, oh, geez. Now, yeah. As soon as I said, everybody calls in. So, and then we'll do uh, Beverly Hills. So let's do Alhambra first. California, you're on the air right now. What's going on? Hey, what's up? How's it going, sir? Hey, man. Nice to talk to you. <laughs> yeah, long time no chat, right? Yeah, what's what's <laughs> what's new in gr- the greater Los Angeles area? Uh, well, apparently there's been some fires that have been starting. Uh, I, I've, I have heard of some of these. I flew over some of them as I was coming back yesterday. Yeah, as a matter of fact, uh, someone had pointed it out while we were in the car driving the other day. Yeah, yeah. Well, there's two. There's two. You yeah, there's pointed the fire out to me. There's two sets of fires. There's one down. There's a. There's some down in uh, Southern California, down near Los Angeles. And then the big fires, the ones that are tearing it up, are in the the northern part of the state uh, to where it was one of the first times where they actually took us above, they, you know, just to play it safe with the with the airlines, they took us above like 40,000 feet as we were flying up the entire Pacific coast. So, yeah, a lot of homes destroyed, massive property damage. Uh, the winds fueled them, and it's kind of a, kind of a big deal right now. Wow. Hey, so have you been on Google search Google's search page today? Uh, a little bit. Why? What What did you find that was interesting? 
Uh, I'll have to send you the screenshot I took, but uh, it's Flat Earth Dome. Oh, oh, oh! You mean the literal like, Google animation when you when you type in Google, and it they pops up that cool yeah, little graphic. Yeah. I did see that. Yeah, you. you yep. There's several people that have sent it to me, and it's fantastic. Yeah, it shows sort of an Arctic setting with an explorer that's been dead for a long time, and uh, yeah, and it was had a dome like structure over the top of it. Yeah, so a frozen frozen flat land covered by a dome structure. Yeah, it was brilliant. In fact, it's still. I think it's still out there right now. Someone was telling me that some developer for Google uh, tweeted about Flat Earth, and then apparently he was fired like two days later. Well, don't – again, until you have multiple sources on that, I know which story you're talking about there. That's, there was, yeah, that story – I wanted to double-check on it. Yep, yeah. And in fact, Peanut Gallery just said that, yeah, if you go to Google right now, anybody that wants to go to Google, you will see the cool little animation clickable thing. And it does look like a flat, snowy earth covered by a dome. But yeah, as far as the the Google developer who I think was they supposedly linked him to Google Earth that was a flat earther. I think it was a plant. I don't know who planted it, but it it didn't 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 get repeated by any sites. So apparently it didn't fool anybody. Uh, but yeah, I got I got that email a few times. That's what I was thinking. Yeah, it's it's not bad, but at the same time, you also remember the not to go off on a tangent, the Vegas shooter. Uh, there was a quick little website or tweet out there that they you know that was being linked to to, a, to flat Earth, and that didn't get any traction either, because as you know, if they wanted to push that agenda, they could have done that in two seconds. I mean, they all they had to do was put you know I, we are all Mark Sargent T-shirt on this guy. And you wouldn't be hearing from me for a while because I would I would be in some sort yeah, of yeah I've seen a couple of memes blending uh, flat Earth and the Vegas shooting like the one where it shows them from it shows somebody from a broken window and the title of the meme is I can't see the curvature <laughs> that's awesome it's horrible but it's awesome that's good <laughs> but. Uh, earlier today, me and uh, those British guys were uh, tearing apart the Google Pixel uh, commercial. Oh, yeah. Where it says, uh, Earth is flat, period, right. and then it right. changes it to a question mark. Right. Uh, did you notice the girl biting into an apple before that? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. The the dig against uh, Apple. Yeah, I, I got that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, geeks, nerd, uh, nerds are notorious for for pulling little stunts like that. So yeah, having a girl bite into an apple was about as close as they could with, do without getting some sort of uh, possible legal action against them. Yeah, major, uh, um, <laughs> major backdraft. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, dude, uh, thank you so much for coming out here, man. It was a blast uh, meeting you. Uh, you are truly, seriously, one of the most humble, genuine people I've ever met, bro. Like, oh, well, thank you. I, and I, I, it, I don't know if I deserve any any of that praise, but thank you. I again, I'm just along for the ride, like everybody else. I'm I'm just trying to see where this thing goes. And so, like when I caught a little crap today from from people because I picked up the uh, uh, that British uh, Russell Brand show this morning at 3 a.m. It was, it was, look, 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 if it furthers the community, that's what I'm going to do. I will get it. If they say they're going to call me at 3 a.m., by God, I'm getting up for it. And, you know, I'm going to answer the phone. Lots of people what, would have said. What's wrong with talking to Russell Brand? Well, some people. What do they have to say about that? I mean. They, they, you know, they think, oh, he's a sellout and he's just a tool for the system and stuff like that. It's like, hey, it's still freaking Russell Brand. He's got a million subscribers on YouTube. He's got he's known all over the place. He's a, an actor. I mean, for God's sakes, he was married to Katy Perry. In one of the most high profile marriages out there of the decade. So you guys can say what you want, but I'm gonna I would have I would have gotten up at three in the morning for a lot less. For for, you know, if if a smaller like a radio station, you know, like an all night station in Philadelphia would have called me. I would have gotten up. I would have complained probably a little bit more, but I still would have gotten up for it. So, but thank you for that. Did you even have a chance to talk to him about the uh, the UK conference? No, dude. Did you listen to that interview? Yeah, I know. He kind of yeah, ran it. I mean, <laughs> really. dude, we're talking. Yeah, this guy is a comedian by trade. 
and he's very intelligent, and he has a lot going on in his head at all times. And honestly, I was grateful that I could get in. I was talking as fast as I could because he's the type of guy that if he spots any dead air, he's going to take advantage of it to where I didn't even give him dead air, and he went after it. To he, you know, where he went off that weird tangent that he was doing, which is fine. Again, I, the fact that I got twenty minutes. You mean on the when show, he was doing that weird voice? Yeah, doing that weird you know, old British voice where he was talking like one of the vologs from uh, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, and it's like, oh, but he kept going for like two or three minutes. It was killing me. So, but at the end, I pointed it out. It's like, dude, you could have gone on for a lot longer than that. I was still going to answer your question. We, you know that was all about the the core of the earth, and uh, I finally got in. At least I got it in at the end. So anyway, Russell Brand will be fine. I'm not. It, it again. I there'll be more. You know, down the road. So, um, any any other things? Yeah. Any, any question for the air traffic controller before I I I've got to pick up Beverly Hills. As much as you know, I like picking up Beverly Hills. But do you have any any other questions before we let you go? No, you know what? Uh, no questions for him. I pretty much understand what the whole thing with the air traffic is going on, dude. Uh, it's just it's great to hear it from someone else, though. That's awesome. Cool. Uh, I just want to let Beverly Hills know that we were a little disappointed that they didn't show up to the meetup. Unless after all after all that smack they were talking. I know. Unless they showed up and they didn't tell anybody. That's even worse. <laughs> it could they could have been there. I mean, there was what 50, 60 people there. They, they could have been there and we may not have known. Cause there was a lot of young guys. Dude, come there. on. Like like they would have never said like they would have not let you know that they were Andy and I don't know. Uh, Maybe. You never know. What's it's, his name from Beverly Hills? I, I don't know. But let's you know what? I'm gonna pick them up next. So hey yeah, man, dude, it, I'll talk to you later, bro. Yeah, it was a pleasure. Talk to you soon. All right, man. All right. All right. Let's. Yes. Yes. Peanut gallery. I know. He. Peanut gallery is trying to move me along. All right. Let's pick up Beverly Hills, California. Okay, guys. You're on. Hey, what's up? It's it's Ro- it's hey, what's up? It's Andy and Ross. Andy and Ross, <laughs> if that is your real what's name. Up? So I'm, I'm assuming that what <laughs> we were talking about was true. You actually did not show up at the meetup in Pasadena. No. No, I couldn't. I couldn't get someone to cover for me at work. I'm a hardworking guy out here. I couldn't get anyone to cover I, for me. See here. So, okay, one. Oh wait, what's what? I love to. What? What smack were? What smack were we talking? I don't think yeah, you we guys were talking, talking really any smack. <laughs> no, we're not. No, it's just that, no. It's, yeah. No, I. Look, I'm glad you guys called because you're you're. I don't. I don't think I've gotten maybe three calls from that area since since I've started this thing. Mm-hmm. So. Hey, I'm just glad you guys are in. The, clo- the closest is the the closest is that Alhambra Uber kid who just called. Oh, that's the closest uh, I think. Right? Yeah, he's pretty Uber. close. Yeah. I did. I unfortunately I still don't know uh, the Greater Los Angeles area that well. I while I was down there, you know, I was just down there uh, over the weekend, and I was in let's see, yeah. Monrovia, Arcadia, everywhere between those places and San Juan Capistrano, Pasadena, and I flew in and out of the Ontario airport. So. I was probably <clears throat> at some point. So you guys had 60 people? That's pretty darn good. Yeah, that was pretty good, considering it was just a, a local meetup. And there's two. That was the third location that was wow. being done in, in Los Angeles. So there was, you know, there's been meetups in Santa Monica, in Rancho Ooh. Cucamonga, and now in Pasadena. And it's, it's, going, it's going great. And it was a great crowd. Really wonderful people. And... Uh, uh-uh. Fantastic live chats that were happening. So I, L- I have to... LA is pretty big on that. I'm yeah. Sorry, go ahead. No, no, it's it's good, and I'm I'm glad. It, it... Yeah. The uh, and hey, they have market. UFO. They have the ufology and stuff. You know, ufology. They have all that down now. Oh yeah, yeah. I, I know. California is not shy on yeah. the whole conspiracy thing, as long as it's kind of a piece. No, no. Were there any Were there any cute flat earther girls there? But yes, there were some attractive flat earth really? girls. There. Man, see, I wanted someone to cover for me so bad. I wanted to be there so bad. <laughs> really? Because that's that's Man. the goal. Here. Well, actually, you know, that goal isn't that, my goal. It's that far-fetched because there's, there's now flat earth meetup websites that are being formed. Like, think like like flat earth meetup.com. Like dating sites? 
Yeah, yeah. Flat Earth Dating. Flat Earth Date. That's good. .com. <laughs> well, I mean, what's the point of dating somebody that doesn't believe now? Because uh, I mean, you have you're to talking about them and all huge, that. So huge barrier. If they don't, I have to yeah. say that is a crazy barrier. You know, this whole not being able to talk about stuff when you're in a you know relationship. I mean, I have to keep that quiet. I really do. I'm not gonna lie. I'm guilty. Yeah. <laughs> uh, no, I, no, I've gotten email after email after email about marriages that are mm-hmm. just tanking because of this. Really? <laughs> <Breaking apart. laughs> Wow. Husbands and wives. I mean, it's, you, where where they're they're just it's they're, flat. No, it's not it's flat. No, it's no, not no, it's worse it's worse than that. It's like it starts you know this argument. It's like it it's like it's like honey, I think the earth is flat, right? It can be male or female <laughs> the other side. The other side going looking just this long stare, it's like you're an idiot. <laughs> you know, and that's that's how it opens. Or, or you know, there's Good. children that are into it, and then the parents have to. You know, it's like, okay, does the child need counseling? Yeah. Uh, how exactly. many kids have got shipped off? You know, they're yeah, they're going. Uh, no, no, no. Seriously, where they're thinking like, okay, d- is it possible this child needs psychological counseling? Is it possible the medications? Wow. Are- no, no doubt that's going on. I'm sure there's thousands of kids right now getting just tossed into the mental ward. Just yeah. don't oh, yeah. come up. Yeah. Yeah, so I'm. What's like, going down? I'm glad that mainstream has a tied us. You need, you need to because... start freeing these people. <laughs> <laughs> Free, what, like Be the big apart- crusader, you know. I'm here. Flat like, Earth is real, damn it. Like, like an apartheid thing. Free flat earthers. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like uh, on a uh, horse. You know? <laughs> uh, yeah, that'll be fun. All right. Anyway, well, we got so, a couple questions. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. We got. We got. Go for it. So, dude, I've been trying to hammer at this for probably the past five calls, and I just don't seem to be getting anywhere with any ideas. But Why? Um, I'm always ta- I'm always talking about how what were all the stars and everything put up there, like as a navigation tool or as a uh, as a, a deception uh, option to deceive us and make us think we're in a spinning uh, a giant universe. Why? What are the stars and all the galaxies? You know, when you go to Montana and you see a real night sky, you know. What answers is that all that answer, for? Answer to that you know? is all of the above and much more. So not only is it a giant clock system, because remember, you know, before clocks and everything, that's <laughs> how they track things was through the sky. Not only right, is it a right. giant clock right. system and a giant navigation mm-hmm. system, because if it's a clock system, it's also really simultaneously a navigation system. And not right, only those right. things, but it's also inspiration because it's very, very pretty. And uh-huh. yeah, faith. Uh-huh. Between those, those are probably the big three. And then after that, uh, you know, it's also a, a low level, at least for the stars, a low level lighting system. You know, Paganism. Yeah. But uh, here's faith. the thing. Here's what I'm still, I don't know why this is bugging me so much, but it's just really bugging me. Like, was it made, was all these stars and all these, these lights put there as, an, as like, a tr- as just a, a deception, basically, is what I'm saying. Well, I mean, just to deceive us that we live in a universe. A te- well, no, 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 because I mean, yeah, technically, of course, they're a deception, but it was man that created the universe up up until right. Science. But it seems like it's too easy for them to just take that and like, like it seems like to. So, oh, easy. Um, just easy. Add that up there, yeah. Map no, no, out. I got you. I got you. Wow. It's easy for us to interpret it now. As some sort of solar mm-hmm. system, but remember back in the day when we were a much much simpler mm-hmm. people, yeah. they just thought yeah, you know, they just start started making up stuff. It's like oh well, it's you know it's it's it, they personified the uh, the constellation, the zodiac, and all that stuff. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. So, it, so there wasn't this giant group think conscience consciousness of us being a spinning like it, it's pretty hard. It's just hard to think back on a time when you had millions of people on Earth who looked up at the sky and didn't think that that equated to a universe. You know what I mean? It's just crazy to think about that. Eh, it was an easier, it was an easier time. Uh, I mean, look at, look at all yeah. the, say that about mm-hmm. decades in the it, previous decades. It's like, we're at the fifties, you know, more interesting, but at the same time, mm-hmm. look, look at that. The quote I give people uh, is, right. <laughs> uh, I'll give you, I'll give you the biblical version, which is, uh, yeah, the God created the sun and the moon, right? But it was NASA that told us what it was. Basically, you know how how big they were and how far they far they were they were away. And so when they man, Anymore. To, sorry, go ahead, go ahead, Thomas, air traffic controller. Yeah, you want, this is you want to chime in? Just, yeah. yeah. I just been listening in. Interesting stuff. Having yeah. a good time, chilling. Yeah. Um, 
I got a bunch of kids and a wife and sometimes those wife and kids make noise. So I'm sitting out here in my truck right now, yeah. um, in the driveway, looking up at the stars on a beautiful night. Um, it just reminds me of, and, and forgive me here, but, uh, I've got a, one of those G Judeo Christian kind of backgrounds. Sure. So I kind of lean on the Bible a little bit. And, uh, I, I think Proverbs talks about the stars singing his praises of the mm-hmm. creator. And maybe we've got the creator all wrong. Maybe the Bible is not necessarily exactly the place to go for the creator and everything. But uh, I feel like the whole flat earth and enclosed dome actually screams a creator. Sure. Um, and I've seen some things online recently um, over the past year and a half that, that have said that have shown um, what happens if you put if you put a musical note through a bubble inside a jar. And it actually kind of lights up like a star. There's a couple of ten dollars oh, right, right. out there soul, that are bigger soul, than what I've yeah, No, I, I, mean, I know that word. It's called soul luminescence. Yeah. yeah. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. And and those little bubbles and flashes inside the jar look very much like the stars up there in the in the uh, quote unquote sky. True. Um, right. They look very similar when you zoom in on one very closely. Um, maybe it's just water up there with some music out there, and those stars are actually mm-hmm. singing the praises of the creator. That seems very archaic. And, <laughs> yeah, that's very actually interesting. That's very, that's very interesting. I saw that. Beautiful yeah, things I, I, with the oh, stars singing the praises of the creator. Could oh, you? heck, I'll, I'll, take, I'll take it up a notch from there, and which is it, yeah. there's a bunch of videos on it where there's people that said that stars are actually la- angels. And they're marching in formation, which is why when you do a time lapse on them, they're always, you know, going in this big, this big formation up there. Really? I, oh yeah. Wow. Yeah, there's all sorts. But so what does that even mean? Point is, it Angels depends, meaning the, what? The meaning, what I'm saying is, is that whatever the dominant educational force is of the day, that's what your reality is. So if the church had run, you know, if, if, you know, if the separation between church and state hadn't happened, and if science wasn't such mm-hmm. a major institution, I, it's a pretty uh-huh. safe bet that what was going on in the stars would be described a whole lot different than what you're hearing right now. Right, that's a good so. point. That's Anything, good yeah, got, well, take, like, give, you, give you one more question before, because we're going to come in up okay, to okay. The, the break here in a second. So what else you got? Well, um, really quick. I was just thinking, you know, are we all just part of a, um, basically I've been getting these, some of these arguments and, you know, not only are you battling like, uh, cognitive dissonance with people and then learning about this stuff, but I have one friend in particular where it's almost like I'm battling his like in- intellect and he gets very angry. You know, you've said all this stuff before, but I, you know what I answered him with? I said that th- that is basically, we're part of the, that's, you're a victim of the big lie effect. That's what it would do. That right. is what the big lie theory is, right? From, you know, Goebbels. That's what his entire thing is, is that that's don't, don't how it works, this. right? And don't be too hard on him because, look, denial is out of the five stages of grief. You know, denial, um, anger, bargaining, um, depression, and acceptance. Denial is by far the most powerful and is the most immediate. And some people dig in. To this day, we have dedicated trolls that, you know, have organized campaigns against Flat Earth because they cannot get past. And they've been doing this for months and some even years because they cannot get past that first stage of denial, which is, you know, it's it's like a door that tough. cannot they cannot bust the It's tough. Yeah, they, they can't you do know, it. And the more I, training I, they I, have. So your your friend, are, are, are they, do they lean science, meaning... You know, they they into yeah, geology, yeah. hydrology. What are they into? Yeah, they're into, you know, the typical stuff. But they're just, when it comes to flat earth, they're just, that's it. I'm an asshole. You know, <laughs> screw you. Um, screw Trump. Screw everything. Oh, I got gotcha. you. Yeah, well, you if, they're, if they're generally <laughs> but, angry people, yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. Well, hold, God, there's one more thing. I want, oh, yeah, I wanted to ask you one thing really quick. Uh, your friend, actually. Of about the uh, instrument uh, that uh, you know, the instrument that you know, where you know, you get above what? Don't you get up into higher altitudes and it's not as much friction up there, and that you're 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 supposedly kind of cruising at a. You're not. Nec- I was just trying to understand because he was talking about the you know the 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 machine or some kind of automatic device that 
keeps the altitude. Yeah, sure. The, um, the altimeter. It, yeah. It, yeah, is that all? Is that based on a gyroscope? Like I've heard from other people, even from Mark Sargent on some of these other, you know, podcasts. Do it, do it, do it, in, do it in ninety on. seconds, Pressure. Thomas. Go ahead. It's just, oh, it's just based on pressure. Okay. It's atmospheric pressure. So, um, you know, the higher up we get, no matter if it's a flat Earth or a ball, the pressure, the higher up we get, the the column of density in the atmosphere, it is more thin the higher we go, right? It's less dense the higher we go. It's most dense at the surface. Yeah. And the higher you go, it's 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 a little thinner the higher up altitude you go. So at a thousand feet, it's a little less thin. At, at twelve thousand feet, it's significantly more. Uh, it's thinner air. Um, and the higher you go, the air is thinner and thinner. So at a certain point, these instruments, all they're reading, the only thing they're reading is what's the pressure of this of the, the barometric pressure. Okay. And sure. according to that barometric pressure, I should know the barometric pressure at. 39,000 feet is different than the barometric pressure at 40,000 feet. And my instrument, I'll set it at, I'll set my altimeter at 2992 when I get up that high. And according to this, this is telling me how far above the surface of the flat earth or the plane or whatever, how far above I am, um, regardless is, is, of, is, like I said, ball or Is plane. there a name? It's just a pressure. Is thing. there a name for it? Is there a name for this it's just not, instrument? Yeah. It's, it's Do we know altimeter. any names? Oh, it's just called an yeah. altimeter. So I can just yep, type in altimeter and learn about yeah, altimeter. So, research on I, would, that, dude. I would. Yeah. Okay. Go ahead. Just, well, that's okay, guys. We're, I mean, we're, that's just one thing. Yeah. We're coming up to our last break. Hey, Mark, so I got to say bye Andy, to you guys. Hey, Mark. It, Andy, listen, listen. I just want to throw out there one more thing. I want to throw it out there. You got 10 that, seconds. Um, I know. I know. Stephen Paddock. Stephen Paddock, the Las Vegas shooter. Yeah. Um, his last name actually means a paddock is a small enclosure to keep livestock in. So, yeah, yeah. Wow. We want to know what you think. We're going to get, we're going to try to. We are TFR. My faith in destiny is all I need to prevail. Truth Frequency Radio. Not singing it. Nope. But that was Joe Jackson stepping out from his album, Night and Day. And I hear he's touring again. Is That's the rumor anyway. So tonight is Subject Matter Expert Night. And we've got Thomas, who is a air traffic controller from one of the busiest airports in the United States. And we're taking your calls. And this is our last segment. So this is your last chance to ask questions or make comments or whatever. And we've got a few calls lined up, so let's grab... No, you know who we're going to grab? Start spreading the news. We're leaving today. Go. Hey. <laughs> Hello <laughs> that, there. Yeah, nice. Like, nice. I like, throw, it, throw it to you. And yeah, I, I was going to try and do the William Shatner speaking <laughs> no, uh, song. No, there, William Shatner word, tried but to I was do... Like, I no. started to laugh. No, it's okay. So yeah, what's, like, uh, what's going on in New York? It's not going to work. That's right. How are you doing tonight? Hello, uh, Thomas. How are you? Hey, man. How are you doing, man? Uh, pretty good. Pretty good. Oh, man. A bunch of things. You guys had some great callers already. Um, yeah. You know, the stars. I I agree. I, I think that, well, because um, light is a frequency, and it would make sense that it could make noise, a sound. And, you know, people, that whole concept of them singing, I was like, wow, that's amazing, because I've always thought that. I also think the constellations may be a language or something that if we really knew what they were, we could understand and, you know, read it. That's what I think, it, that it might be some sort of language, you know, mm-hmm. a very, a very maybe, uh, star stuff. Maybe even just like a symphony. Each one of them has their yeah. own note to play at a specific time, and it creates a beautiful song that the creator loves. You know, 
Hmm? Right, it right. Just be that maybe that. Maybe I'm just being too poetic or just sappy yeah, or whatever, hey, but it might be that. Simple, no. You know? There's nothing wrong but with that. But that might poetic. be what makes the firmament. You know, I mean, I'm not religious at all. Yeah. And I, I listen and, you know, I listen to, you know, what people say that's in the Bible and things and it makes sense. Maybe, you know, that because he said, right, by speaking the word, he did whatever. So maybe that is why there is the dome because they're in that pattern and you know they're telling us i don't know it, it's mind-blowing it was really cool really cool nice nice it's cool man so what's uh, uh um what also oh i was gonna say also can't go to your spouse girlfriend or anything right off the bat hey the earth is flat you're gonna get kicked in the dick don't do it <laughs> you have to go at him sideways dude i had to ease my wife that. into it i had to ease her in. yes but I will tell you this, Absolutely. she knows me, man. My wife knows me. We've been oh, yeah. together 17 years. And, and, and yep. she found some way to get her mind around the lunatic who thinks the earth is flat. She found a way. So she's a good yep. girl, but I will tell you, it took some work. Hey, one, one thing, I wonder how many people um, have considered, I wonder, in an infinite universe, right? We're talking about infinite theory like Stephen Hawking likes to throw his bullshit out there, right? Um, if we're talking about infinite ideas an infinite universe which is the universe or not whatever um people ask me all the time what's so what's below the earth how far down does it go i don't know maybe it's just all dirt i don't know dude maybe it goes down forever if you can imagine infinite space why can't you imagine imagine infinite dirt why can't you imagine right. infinite water above all that stuff i wonder um there's these two opposing kind of ideas in the flat earth community and i don't think they necessarily have to be opposing mm-hmm. um of are we in an enclosed dome or are we on an infinite plane? I wonder, could it just be like a couple of layers of a sandwich? Maybe we have a ceiling and that ceiling goes out for maybe forever or maybe for significantly farther than just a little bit past our ice wall at the Antarctic. You know, I mean, maybe it goes out for a billion miles or so who knows i, mean, I don't know right. i wonder Maybe. why, why, why couldn't that be that? i mean do we, do we have to be in a dome that's just kind of limited to just beyond the edge of the of the uh, ice wall out there in antarctica or um because you know the project dominic and and fishbowl and stuff like that it looked like very much like we were blasting rockets off up and blowing bombs up on uh, into the firmament and the firmament and, and, and exploding in there i wonder does it necessarily have to be a wall at the edge or could it, could the dome go out, extend for hundreds of thousands or millions of billions, whatever, how many, many miles, maybe it's just a layer, maybe, maybe a couple layers. So, so yeah. there's the idea of other, uh, continents out beyond. Uh, Eventually though, and actually, and, ancient, and, uh, old <laughs> ahead, and, and actually as a guy that was describing air pressure earlier, you, you'll understand this more than most. And that is, Here's the thing: yeah, if you right. don't eventually have a dome. Eventually, it, it, fine. If it's if it's a shallow dome, it's one thing. If it's a really really big dome, that's also another thing. But to have no dome, you're eventually going to run into the same problem that the globe does. If you're if you're if you're going down the mainstream science road, which is okay, where is the bleeding edge between atmosphere and the unimaginable power of the vacuum of space? You know, it kind of oh, it's absolutely. like now. Uh, and I know that people say, well, it doesn't have to be a vacuum of space. So I'm going, okay. But uh, people, the reason why the dome concept resonates more than the infinite plane, and again, if you believe in the infinite plane, hey, great, super, super great. But the reason why it resonates is because people, the, the, whole, <laughs> con- <laughs> the whole concept of infinity, <laughs> it bugs us even as children. You know, you try to think of infinity and that usually puts, no you, to, puts, puts you to sleep. People like... The whole, I mean, look at what we do. Art imitates life and life imitates life. Look what we do now. We make boundaries for everything. Apartments, buildings, city blocks, counties, states. Our lives, Mark. Our our lives lives have a beginning and an end. Yes. Everything has a beginning and an end, right? We need boundaries. We have to have them. We can't conceive things that are boundless. We can't can't conceive infinity. It's difficult for us. So, yeah, I I agree. The, The dome idea, I'm with it. But I feel like maybe it's really huge. Oh, it could be really maybe huge. There, maybe in fact, it's there was enormous. A, maybe, there was and, a and maybe mod- there are other earth ponds underneath that same dome. I don't oh, know. yeah, 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 yeah. There was a guy that made a, a model where it, he it was like a like a giant salad bowl over the top of a quarter. Whereas you know, yeah, the dome could be very, very big, and there could be a bunch of quarters inside it. No, no, no doubt. 
Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Does that kind of help you, Mark? Yeah, and it definitely doesn't seem like we're in here alone. You know, with those things we see up there at night, the lights. Yeah, you might oh, be right. Yeah. There might be other little little areas. That, uh, yeah. Sure. Yeah, crazy, crazy. Oh, man. Yeah, the uh, UFO thing, that's another entire topic. Well, they could actually absolutely yeah. be other bits of intelligence from other earth ponds, you know? They could be 100,000 years ahead of us on another earth yeah. pond, just a couple hundred thousand miles away, or, or 15,000 miles, whatever, you know? Yep. Yeah, I mean, it's hard to dismiss that and just throw away all that data, all that information when you have so many people talking about abductions and witnessing things. And so, yeah, I, I, I'm definitely with you. I. Oh, well, are you still there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, yeah. yeah. Oh, sorry, sorry. I thought, don't don't drop the phone. Sorry, sorry, sorry. That's all right. <laughs> yeah, I. I I definitely think there could be other people in here, other things. I don't, I don't know what you want to call them in here. Oh, yeah. I mean, sure. Heck, you, you've heard me tell this yeah. story. It's like, look, grab some night vision binoculars. Go out and check for yourself. Yeah. There's a lot of stuff Absolutely. crawling around in the skies, and it ain't us. So I know that's not Absolutely. great grammar, but it's, it's more effective hey. if I say it like that. It, uh, there's, there's hey, a lot I, of stuff. I, got, I got a movie for you. Okay. Oh, and I got a quote was, for you. Uh, What's the movie? Okay. I was watching... Um, the remake of Friday the 13th. Which one? And in the very beginning, of uh, the original, they did a remake of the original. All right. They called the Friday the 13th. It, it. Wasn't, it wasn't really the same thing. They went to the lake, and, you know, of course, they all get slaughtered. But, yeah. it, it, but what I was getting at, it was weird, because why would they have, like, a whole section, a whole scene on GPS and satellites and space? Oh yeah, in a Friday the Thirteenth movie. Good point. You know that I, they Perfect. just caught me off guard. I was like, I was like, that's weird. Why would that be in here other than it, to just yeah. reiterate, hey, we're on a ball. Don't worry about it. Keep going about your business. The <laughs> hidden producers. You know, it's in yeah. your subconscious. Yeah. Although yeah. they're losing and ground, how hard really fast, faster than they're gaining it. Yeah, and I mean, how hard is it really to get something quick in a movie? I mean, you buy off the set designer, you buy off the producer, somebody. And Mark, I mean, how is it? Mark you are that? chopping up something horrible. I don't know where you're walking, but stay away from wherever that is. Oh, I didn't move. Is this any better? That's better. Okay. Sounds clear now, yeah. Yeah. You were All right. Okay. Hey, hey, um, go ahead. I have a, I had a quote for, for Thomas. It was I found this. Uh, I thought it was actually rather funny. Okay. Uh, what you got? TWA2341. For noise abatement, turn right 45 degrees. Center, we are at 35,000 feet. <laughs> How much noise can we make up here? Sir, have you heard the noise the 747 makes when it hits a 727? <laughs> I thought that was yeah, funny. I was like, uh, I got to read Air that traffic controller joke. I have never heard one. That's brilliant. That's fantastic. Now, man, in the uh, community, we've got a look. bunch of jokes, and we always... We always struggle with, oh, how would how would people actually appreciate this comedy if they weren't actually involved with aviation? So it's good to hear a good air traffic control joke. That's the final. Nice. <laughs> hey, and I had a, a, an actual question for you about the radar. You how far, yeah. I mean, which radar do you use and how far out can you see these planes? You know, I mean. It depends on the system. They're low, like the like, best uh, radar systems we have. Might go 60, 80 miles at most. So off the coast, mm. you're not getting much more than that. If we have some radar antennas right there at the coast, you know, like New York, they can, they've got a, a nice radar system right there at, at the airport, and their system goes out, like I said, 40, 60, 80 miles with very good accuracy. Um, and then off the coast after that, there's nothing. So um, that, that's about the limit of our radar accuracy so um yeah. we use gps in between for a lot of these uh for a lot of these systems but um what is gps um you know loran uh, um in the was it the 50s or 60s we were able to easily accurately navigate the atlantic ocean from new york to to, uh, to london um using loran right and, and what is that based off of that's am radio towers and we were able to go couple thousand miles just on am radio towers so um the gps system goes significantly farther but with with accurate radar stuff you're talking 100 miles or less 
absolutely less, you know, less than a hundred miles. Gotcha. Mm-hmm. Yeah, cool, because cool. I was wondering if you know there was anything to the line of sight issues and things like that. Does it help when you're flat? You know, there is some, kind of we definitely experience some. We experience some line of sight issues to where if, if aircraft are significantly lower and we don't have a sight within 50, 60, 70 miles of, of the aircraft, we'll we'll lose mm-hmm. it. We'll lose radar contact on no doubt. Um, yeah. So yeah, the the higher the aircraft is for sure. You know, with the line of sight, it's it's easier to keep keep them in radar contact but um yeah you're talking 60 to 80 miles at most yeah about mm-hmm. 80 miles okay cool mm-hmm. awesome cool awesome. Uh, be, wait before you go mark uh yeah. real quick the yeah, quote sir. the quote from peanut gallery is if you don't read the newspaper you're uninformed if you read the newspaper you're misinformed but who said it yeah Mark Twain. Mark Twain, for sure. I know yeah. that one. That is so true. Good. That is absolutely the truth. Right, but man. you have to. You have to know your enemy. You have to listen to what they're actually saying still. Yes. And, you know, and they there is some truth in there. You got to pay attention. Yeah. For sure. For All sure. Right, man. Hey. You can't, awesome. uh, you can't make a good lie without sprinkling a little bit of truth oh. in it, bro. I, I got to say sorry to Candy. Or from the enemy or whatever. Oh. No. Yeah, go ahead. Sorry, go ahead. You got to say yeah. sorry to who? Uh, I was just going to say, I got to say, sorry, Candy. She's been calling and trying, and I've been trying to merge calls, but I'm a moron and can't work my phone. She tried Skype <laughs> as, me. As and you're breaking that up, that was going to disconnect me. Yeah. Yeah, that okay. was going to disconnect me. So I was like, I'm not doing that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I, I'm sorry. Yeah, I couldn't do it. I, I don't know. I'm a moron. No. But I, no. I'll do a hangout after. I would never say that about you in public. Well, right. at least not on air. Well, not, yeah. not to my face. I mean, <laughs> exactly. Exactly. All right, man. Hey, uh, we'll talk soon. Okay? Awesome. Yeah, excellent conversation. Great callers. Shout out to everybody. Love everybody. This is great. This is cool. Can't wait for the conference. I'm, yep. Me uh, me. I'm like bugging out. It's so close. Okay. Talk to you soon. So close. All righty. <laughs> bye-bye. Bye-bye. All right. Um, Mark, let me take 30 seconds just for, uh, for just a second. 20, what? 30 seconds. Sure. What? I want to tell you. When I first left you a voicemail, I really did imagine you would never pick up. You would never call back. When I finally got the the, uh, the received call and the missed call and the voicemail, yeah. saying, hey, this is Mark Sargent. I got your voicemail. I want to talk to you. Um, I just want to say I love what you do. I appreciate what you do. You've done an excellent job. And having me on just to chat, hang out, shoot the breeze, has been really a fantastic experience, and I appreciate what you do. I just oh, got to tell you, I love your stuff. And I do, I do appreciate you. I, I appreciate you. You're, right. you're an excellent man. I appreciate the, the fact that you're open-minded and thinking about and, and, and leading this charge. I just, I'm, I'm thankful for you. That's all I want to say. Oh, uh, well, thank you. And you're very welcome. And, you know, again, the jury's still out. I still might be clinically insane. But at the same time, yeah, I'm man, not. you might be. You might be a whack job. Most of us, what if we all are? We might be just but I'm not. I'm not gonna be... looking for something to, to to put an acid down or whatever. But yeah, so I appreciate you. That's what I'm oh, trying. To say. Thank you. And while and while I am being clinically insane and apparently leading a group of people into oblivion, uh, I'm at least going to do it with uh, you know kindness, and I'm going to try to lead by example. That's the, that's the best I can do. And you know I've tried to make sure well, you've that you've done it's... a great job. Well, thank you. I appreciate it, man. Thank you. Uh, Let's see, Peanut Gallery, it's his uh, jury's not out. You are insane. Thank you, Peanut Gallery. That's great. And I, I want, you know, there's something I haven't, I haven't even concerned. mentioned. There's a movie that you will probably know of. I got to mention to you, we have some time and, and uh, I'll pick up, uh, I think I'll pick up sure. North Dakota. But I, before I pick up North Dakota, we still have 10 minutes left in the show. I want to mention, so sure, like, yeah. Yeah. like if you've ever bowled, you'll know that, um, you know, that bowling movie with Woody Harrelson and Bill Murray was nowhere even Kingpin. close. Yeah, Kingpin wasn't even close to being remotely film. Yeah, really accurate. Was it? it was not a very fun film. But even from the scoring standpoint, you know, they they tried to because honestly, bowlers they just bowl strike after strike after strike after strike. I mean, you know, they never leave oh, really yeah. any pins, and yet these guys were over two hundred. Right. You know, at the end of that game, going that's impossible. You you literally have to throw I think like seven strikes just to get two hundred out of out of the ten, and. Yeah. Because everything compiles it, you know, it, it adds up. 
But the a movie that struck me, and it's actually from I gotta mention this to you. This is an obscure movie. I've not brought it into Yes, I'm going to do the Cusack film. Thank you, Peanut Gallery. He's already looking into this, which is uh but I I did it before you did it, so that counts. Uh the Grace Year in movies was nineteen ninety nine, mm-hmm. and there was an obscure little movie there which was called Pushing Tin with John Cusack <laughs> and Billy Bob Thornton about, it's probably the yeah. only one of its kind, about the lives of air, yeah. the, the interesting and drama-filled lives of air traffic controllers. Did, did one, did you see that this movie? That movie to and, me, man. Yeah? Yeah, I've seen it, absolutely. And? Um, that, that movie to me, it had some things that were really well done and some things that were absolute bullshit. <laughs> um, the things that were really well, well done, <laughs> um, the things that were well done, man, you know how creepy Billy Bob Thornton was, who's just an absolute weirdo. He was just like, he's a whack job, man. I mean, right. what, what, right. what kind of person is that in real life? Right. He's just a weird person. And, and the same with John Cusack, but just on a different level, right? Yeah, they just yeah, shuffled yeah. up the cards and, they, and, and you had a different hand. They were both super weirdos, man. They yeah. were, they were weird. And the thing about air traffic control, it, it's kind of like that. You do have some some very eccentric people um, in the career field that are still fantastic at the job. The skill set doesn't require, um, it doesn't require social skills necessarily. So you, you could be maybe a little bit on a spectrum. I don't know. Maybe, maybe I'm going too far there, but uh, the autism spectrum, you might be, there's some people that are, that are quite strange um, that do a, damn good job at air traffic control then they, they may have absolute horrible spelling and no no ability to uh to do math beyond very simple levels mm-hmm. but air traffic control is a, it's a it's a series of a or b 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 or c it's simple this one or that one kind of things it's yeah. just kind of educated common sense you know i think about it like um when I say educated common sense, I mean, when you're sitting on the interstate, everybody's pulled off the side of the road once or twice here and there, and they've had a tractor trailer. You're in the breakdown lane, tractor trailer truck drives by you 70 miles an hour. He weighs 80,000 pounds. He's 60 feet long. He's doing 70 miles an hour. Yeah. And when he passes you because you've stopped for whatever reason to, you know, you drop the cigarette ash in your lap and you're trying to flip it out. Or you've got a child in the back of this to take a pee or something. Who knows, who knows what? Right, right, the right. Is. You stop on the side of the road. Air traffic, uh, uh, um, uh, a tractor trailer goes flying by at 70 miles an hour. And what happens to your car while you're sitting on the side of the road? Yeah. The whole car shakes and wobbles, right? Mm-hmm. So it's a similar concept, except now you take a, a Boeing 747 and it's doing 390 miles an hour or 550 miles an hour and it flies by and it weighs 400,000 pounds. At 400 miles an hour instead of 60,000 pounds at 70 miles an hour. Right. If you take another airplane that weighs about the same as a car, a little Cessna 172 or a Citation or a Gulfstream, something small, and you put it right behind that airplane, it's going to flip that airplane over. Yeah. The the it's called weight turbulence. The weight yeah. turbulence of it might even snap a wing off, and that airplane goes right into the ground. So you don't necessarily think about the the problems or the, the results of, or the, you know, the issues with air traffic control, it's kind of, like I said before, it's educated common sense. It makes sense when you put it in the terms of you're sitting on the side of the interstate, a 70,000 pound vehicle goes by at 70 miles an hour, it shakes your car. Well, a 400,000 pound vehicle goes by at 400 miles an hour. It's going to break your vehicle in half. Got it. So there's some rules with air traffic control that are similar. We have to provide five or eight or 10 miles behind these giant aircraft that are flying this fast with small ones. So, um, there's some things along those lines that are kind of educated common sense, but beyond that, the skills required is not necessarily, um, I mean, the intellect level doesn't have to be extraordinarily high. I don't mean to say I'm uh, absolute uh, dope or anything, but uh, the point is that A or B, you turn this one a little left, you turn that one a little right, you turn this one a little left, little that one a little right, you climb 1,000 feet or that one, descend 1,000 feet, and you can solve most of your problem problems with things like that and keep the airplane right. separated so right. um it's kind of educated common sense but the, the movie pushing team was yeah. uh there were some accuracies in there that were fun it was kind of to me it seemed almost a little bit like a parody but the right. obnoxiousness of the characters and how wild they were yeah. was uh it, it was 
it was interesting and fascinating on that point. There were some parts that were a little bit silly where there were only two people left in the whole building and the bomb threats and all that stuff. But right, still, right, right. Interesting and fun to watch, yeah. Mm-hmm. One of the better ones done of all the of, of anything that shows air travel control. Yeah, hey, stuff. I'm going to do something a little different here because we got about th- a little less than four minutes. Uh, so I'm not going to pick any more outside sure. callers, just so you guys know. And so apologize to anyone that's in the queue uh, because the peanut gallery has actually been throwing questions at me. Uh, you know, just little little things. And off, most awesome. often I just kind of just wave them off and it's like, Ugh, no, no, I don't want to do anything. Uh, but it, okay, the first one's kind of a silly question, but I, I have to ask. Uh, has well, your I'll try to be quick about each one so we can get okay. there. Has, has right. your guests ever stood behind an, uh, a large airplane engine? <laughs> <laughs> I have not, but I have seen what an it can actual do. pilot jog directly behind another aircraft and seen him blown across 30 or 40, 50 feet of asphalt and rocks and blown into the water. That is <laughs> a, a, pilot, a pilot of all people was on a jogging track that went behind the airfield and the aircraft was on the runway and he wow. jogged right behind it and got blown blown across a road and into the water. And oh, my Lord. And possible visit, and that was bad. Yeah, but I've not done it myself. That's what awesome. Next? Okay, no, that's good. No, that's a perfect reference. Uh, have you ever <laughs> seen, because you're anonymous, more or less, uh, have you ever seen a UFO on your radars? Da-da-da. I have seen what is technically called uh, a UFO. I, I elevated the situation to my supervisor. My supervisor eventually told me um, that's a known event. And what that phrase means, known event, is shut up and go back to work. Wow. So I've seen I've seen aircraft in places they should not have been, and I was not able to track, and was told to shut up. Were they were? And again, we got two minutes or so. Were they fast? Were they large? Can you give us any more details? Uh, they were fast, absolutely. They were, um, as far as it seemed to me, yeah. they were probably not alien. They were most likely, if it's a quote-unquote event, they yeah. were most likely military operations that were just things that we should shut up about and not really talk about. All right. um, so yeah. when I'm told it's an event, I just say, yes, sir. All right. That's fair. So, yeah, I've seen some stuff like that, but nothing that's really weirded me out. Just some things that were in places that should have been there, and when I reported to my boss, because we're supposed to report things to our boss, no matter sure. what we see, you know. No, um, no. I, again, and you know, they it, elevate that to the next level, and then they elevate to the next level, and three or four levels up, they finally come back and they say, "Hey, shut up." Yeah. The peanut gallery may be thinking of the uh, the close encounters, the opening sequences of close encounters of the third kind, where the air traffic controllers are trying to <laughs> yeah, that's good. You know, get those planes good to like stuff. dodge the UFOs, and it's like, and no, and nobody's going to yep. report it. Like everybody, no, the controllers don't report it. The pilots don't report it. It's like, okay, you know, we're, we're just not going to say anything about it. Okay, but last to minute. To answer the question a little more thoroughly, I've not seen anything that seemed alien. Uh, next question, you said we got a couple seconds left. What you got? Oh, oh no, actually, we're, 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 we're going to wind down the show. So I want to thank our guest, All right, cool. Air Traffic Controller Thomas, from one of the busiest airports in the country. Uh, for coming on and uh, remember guys there's more tickets two dozen more tickets just got released for the conference coming up in Raleigh and thank you to all the callers for calling in and next week should be business as usual I'm, I'm hoping and tomorrow I've got a full day I've got a whole bunch of more interviews to do for you and I should put them up uh, no, within the week or so I'm trying to crank them out as fast as I can so let's see if the peanut gallery has anything else so probably he's going to remind me I, I bet you he's gonna. I know what he's gonna type. He's gonna say, "Don't forget to say it at the very end." Yeah. Okay. Come back next week. I'll be here. Same flat time. Same flat channel. Uh, Thomas, stay on the line with me as the music plays out. Okay. No problem. I'll hang out. Thanks for having me. Yep. I had to make a new one. What are you doing?